Welcome to the Secrets of Confident Women podcast, where you'll learn all the best tips, tricks, and practical techniques for building the confidence levels you've always wanted. With inspiring interviews, real-life examples, and game-changing insights, this podcast is for women who know that mastering the skill of confidence is one of the most important things they'll ever do. Hello and welcome to the Secrets of Confident Women podcast. My name is Jody, and together with my business partner Anastasia, we run Rise Women, which is a business dedicated to helping people make confidence their new normal. I am so excited about today's topic because Anastasia and I will be talking about something that affects absolutely all of us because the truth is we all have to deal with this at some point or another in our lives. Today, we are talking about how to have empathy for people, but without taking their crap personally. (laughs) Oh, this is going to be such a good topic. But before we get stuck into our discussion, I just would like to welcome Anastasia back to today's episode. Hi, everyone. I am so glad to be back for one of our one-on-one chats. Always fun. And I'm really excited about today's topic too, because Jodie's right. This is something that does affect all of us. I mean, we've all had times when someone has said something to us or offered unwelcome advice or an unasked for opinion, and whether we mean to or not, we take it personally. And then, whether we like it or not, things can get way out of hand or escalate really quickly. Yeah, exactly. And the problem with this is not only do we end up taking someone else's crap personally, but we also lose the ability to empathise with them and what they may be going through at the time. You see, no matter what you think you know about that person or the situation at the time, there will always be things that you do not see or that you can't understand. And that's where a lack of empathy can probably have a really harmful impact on that relationship. But anyway, before we go into all that, let's first talk about what it looks like when you do take someone's crap personally and how that can affect you. So I'd like you just to think for a moment about the last time someone said something to you and you felt either maybe offended or hurt or angry because you took it as a personal attack on your character. Look, maybe it was a piece of advice from a friend or a family member or it may have even been just a passing comment by a stranger, your boss or someone you just met. I'm sure something will pop into your mind almost instantly because as I said earlier, we've all been there. So what was the first thing that you felt when you heard their comment? Maybe it was anger. Or was it disappointment? Was it frustration? Or maybe you were embarrassed. It could have been any one of these things, a combination of them all or another feeling. Usually though, one of the main things you will feel is probably a lack of understanding that that person doesn't know you and that they have no idea what they're talking about. They are not you, they don't know what you're going through and they have no idea what you are thinking or what you may be feeling. In a word, you feel like they have zero empathy for you or your situation, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I mean, whenever we hear something that we don't like or someone offers us advice that we don't want or an opinion that we didn't ask for, our default thought is usually they've got no idea what they're talking about, yes. right? <laughs> Um, and it, but it's this thought that can lead to just a downward spiral of miscommunication and complete frustration. Yeah. And then we start to overthink it all, right? Because that's what we do best. Yes. You know, what did they mean by that? We still, These little thoughts start going through our head. Why would they say that? You know, how dare they make that comment when they don't understand? Do they have any idea what I'm going through? These just flash through our mind instantly. Um, and the situation can just escalate so quickly. The problem with this is if those thoughts aren't stopped as soon as they start to appear – then they can just cause irreparable damage to a relationship because they will fester, whether you like it or not. They'll play around and around in your head. You will always overanalyze them and overthink everything about the comment, yeah. about the person who made it, and then about your entire relationship in general. Yeah, You know, you'll start to wonder, if they said this now, what about the other things that they've said in the past? And once you start to question the integrity of your relationship, that's when all the cracks start to appear. Yeah. And you know what the worst thing about all of this is? That unless you speak up instantly, and let's be honest, most of us usually don't, no. right? 
um, then the other person has no idea what you are thinking. They actually have no clue how their comment impacted you because they're not in your head. Yeah. You know, they said what they said through their own lens and with their own intentions, but you've interpreted it with your lens and with your own perception. And sometimes, well, actually more often than not, these two perceptions just don't align. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we all know there's no one else like you in the world. You are the only version of you that exists, which means no one can think, feel, act or communicate the way you do. But by the same logic, we can't always understand the way that someone else is feeling, acting, thinking or communicating also, which is why empathy is so important. There's a really great definition of the term empathy by emotion researchers that defines it as the ability to sense other people's emotions coupled with the ability to imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling. And it's this second part of the definition that we're mainly talking about here. The ability to imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling because as we've already said, we never really know for sure. So why is having empathy so important in any type of relationship? Well, I think it comes down to the simple concept of wanting others to treat you the way you treat them. Yeah. If we don't try to have empathy for others, even when they say or do stupid things, <laughs> then how can we expect others to have empathy for us if they really don't know what we're going through either? Yeah, I mean, it just sounds so simple when you put it like that, right? Yeah. Do unto others as to you would like them to do unto you. Like it's a simple concept, but it's actually quite tricky to grasp. I mean, we'll all often have the thought that someone else doesn't understand us. Yeah. But how often do we actually challenge and confront ourselves with the possibility that we don't understand them, mm. right? It's quite rare. And you know what? The truth is you'll never really understand someone else, especially if they've given you crap about something that you've taken personally, <laughs> right? Exactly. But I think, like you said, the value here is in the trying. We yeah. have to at least try to understand and imagine that their perspective may not be aligned with our own. Yeah, definitely. So when this happens, how do we actually manage to have empathy for others without taking their crap personally? Right. Well, I use a specific technique all the time to do this because in my years of presenting, I've come across this situation many, many times and it's all about reframing. Look, you really don't know what's going on for people the same way that they don't know what's going on for us. So the technique I use to help me in these situations is to have some go-to statements in my head ready to go to help me instantly reframe my thoughts and generate some empathy. And I use this with clients all the time. This so is that is like, a, a, here's something I prepared earlier? Well, <laughs> sort of, sort of. It's better not to, because when you're in the moment, it's not, trying to think of these things. That's yeah. why you prepare you for prepared. these situations and have these go-to statements. Let me give you an example. Right. So a few years ago, I was presenting in front of a large audience of people and there was one woman in the front row who just didn't really seem engaged at all. And to be honest, there's always seemingly a woman in the front row that doesn't <laughs> seem to be engaged at all, but whatever. But then at the end, on this particular day, at the end – during the Q&A section I think we were doing, she challenged me about something I'd said in the presentation. But there was a clear undercurrent of attitude. Like just the way right. she was asking a question was just – anyway, it just was different. Right. Anyway, But then – she relentlessly stuck to her line of questioning no matter what I, you know, I was trying to answer her but she sort of just kept throwing it back to me with an obvious intent to undermine me as an expert and embarrass me in front of the audience yeah. which was just, anyway, you know, she was doing this publicly, it was in front of everyone and once I'd composed myself and recovered from the initial shock, my next thought was, I am taking this chick down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Because I was like, you know, I knew what I was talking about. Yep. I was confident about my topic. I'd prepared well. I was sure that I had presented well. But she seemed to be doing her best to undermine and embarrass me, which was a bit rich seeing as, you know, she, to be honest, she looked like she hadn't been paying attention at all throughout the presentation. Right. So part of my initial reaction was shock. 
Right. Perhaps I've misunderstood what she was trying to ask me because surely she wasn't going out of her way to make me look stupid in front of an audience. I went back to her to, you know, to clarify the question because I was like in that little bit of... Who does that? Yeah, who's yeah, yeah. Do, who does that? I yeah. mean, who does that? But then I realised she was doing that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and my next thought was, oh, my God, I'm going to take her down, right? Because <laughs> she's clearly trying to just... Yeah, just ruin Humiliate me in yeah. front of – anyway. Yeah. Anyway. But because I'd experienced something similar to this before, I had a, my technique ready to implement for exactly that type of situation. I paused for a second and then I consciously and intentionally thought to myself, this woman is clearly having a bad day. Maybe her dog died this morning. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. And I tell you, that one thought changed everything. Now, I have no idea whether her dog died that day or even if she has a dog or even if anything terrible even had happened to her that morning. In fact, she may have just decided to be difficult and confrontational and maybe actually maybe she was just a difficult and confrontational woman, but all of a sudden it just wasn't about that anymore. By reframing the way I was thinking about her comment, I allowed myself to feel empathy for her and it was that feeling that helped me manage it better and just not take it personally. Right. If I had let her humiliate me and took on those feelings of embarrassment and anger, then the impact would have been primarily on me because honestly, if she was that sort of person, she probably would have gone home and never thought about it again anyway, right? right. It ties into all that that overthinking and the yeah. overanalyzing that we do too. She probably just said it and, you know, yeah. did her thing and was ready to go home and then it stuck with yeah. you. She could have been that type of person. Yeah, who, absolutely. Who knows, right? But if I had taken it personally, I'd be the one carrying the impact of right. her behavior, yeah. right? And that would have ruined probably that presentation for me and what's worse it could have affected my future presentations too because I may have become too scared to open up for questions in case I'd come under that sort of attack again yeah and you know I really have worked with clients that this has happened to that something has happened for them in a presentation and it the impact of someone's behavior or not even someone's behavior sometimes the impact of how someone looked (laughs) looked at them or looked During their presentation, they sort of said something to themselves about that, took it personally about their presentation. And, you know, I had one woman that it was affecting her 18 months later. Like she kept going back to this one. Well, it just brings up all these fears, right? It generates all this self-doubt and all these negative thoughts and we start overanalyzing and – and, and for what? Yeah. For something that may never have been intended that way. And even if it was, why allow it to have that kind of impact on you? Well, that's it. It was that that person had never thought about it again no. or even probably realised maybe, you know, they were sitting there working out what shopping list they were buying that afternoon. Yeah. It wasn't about being not interested in their presentation or, you know. Anyway, but having empathy in that moment made me realise that I'm not responsible for her behaviour. Right. But it is my responsibility to manage my own behaviour and ensure that I don't take it personally because I cannot allow her actions to impact my future decisions or my future presentations. Yeah. In that moment, it was all about what would help me complete a successful presentation and, you know, have a great time and just, you know, to move forward after that and just live a happier life in general. Yeah. And because I chose not to take it personally, it allowed me to remain calm and composed and as a result, I was able to handle her with care and deal with the situation in a professional manner. Yeah, yeah, that, that's an incredible story and it's such an insightful experience, right? I mean, yeah. it's hard to be able to do that in the moment. Yeah, um, Because in the moment we (laughs) react to emotions. It's what we do. You get angry, you react to that anger. You're embarrassed, you react to the embarrassment. Uh, But like you said, you had the technique sitting in your head ready to go when you needed it. And I think that's what would have made at the time all the difference. Oh, it did make all the difference. And to be honest, because I did handle her with care and I – look, I handled it so professionally at the time – other people in the audience could sort of sense what was happening and yeah. she actually just 
almost embarrassed herself. Yeah. And actually in that presentation I was, you know, selling books and things after the presentation and I had two women come up to me separately and actually apologise for her behaviour. Even and they're not responsible for I her behaviour either. And, and, but they were embarrassed about yeah. the situation she put me on and said to me, you know, you handled that so well. But if I was taking that all personally – and, you know, wanted to take her down. <laughs> but that would have reflected on you, right? That would because have reflected then afterwards, on me. afterwards people wouldn't have been talking about what she said. They would have Correct. been talking about how you reacted. Correct. So, yeah. you know, it is about having that that technique. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's – it's. I mean, I always have that technique, especially when I'm doing presentations because, as I said, there's always someone who looks unimpressed or, you know – Bored. Bored. Or in their seat with their arms has poke, crossed. Yeah, has yeah. poker face on. That, and, yeah. you know, if I, in the middle of my presentation, start having a conversation in my head about that person that maybe that, oh, my God, they're not interested or this – Yeah. It's going to derail me. Like yeah. I just can't allow that to happen. When so really when they I could be to... thinking about the fact that their inbox is full. Yes. Or they need to pick up the dry cleaning. Yeah. Or their kid's not well. Like Correct. you have no idea yeah, what's going yeah. exactly. on in their head, exactly. right? And look, when we're often in situations like that, we tend to react without intentional thought. Yeah. Yeah, we just go off whatever our primary emotion is at the time. It could be anger, embarrassment, whatever it is in that moment. Yeah. And then we react to that. Absolutely. Um, without really thinking about the impact of our reaction, not on the other person, but actually on ourselves. Yeah. And you know what? Confidence actually plays a really big part in situations like this too. Um, and the choices that you make when you're faced with them. I mean, you could have taken it down, right? <laughs> you totally could have taken that. I would have backed you in that fight. But how would that have ended for you? No, bad. Right? You'd be rattled. You'd yeah. be angry. Like you said, it'd affect that presentation and future ones. So what's the point? Yeah. Really? And I would have been standing at the, at you know, my my table or set up with my books and, yeah. you know, I love to meet audience members. After. I would have been rattled. I would have been completely rattled. I would have been embarrassed because yeah. I would have been embarrassed about my behaviour yeah. and that I didn't handle I, it well. Well, because I, I would have been disappointed in myself that I let – her crap <laughs> yeah, yeah. affect, affect me way. personally, right? Absolutely. And it was her crap, you know, yeah. it wasn't my crap. I mean, she said something that may or may not have been intended to shake your confidence and rattle yeah. you, right? Uh, but the truth is you cannot control that. Just no. like you can't control when other people choose to throw crap your way. You just yeah. can't. All you can control is how you react to it and whether you'll choose to take their crap personally and affect your future. And it is a choice. It yeah. really is. Now, you know, this person may be a stranger, so you might not care at all about damaging the relationship because there may not be one to damage. Yeah. So you'd think that it doesn't matter in that instance. But the fact is it does because this is how we create our habits, right? So if you choose to fire up when one person makes a comment that you don't like, like with this woman, mm. then there's a pretty good chance that you'll fire up again when someone else does it too. Um, sometimes it'll be strangers, sometimes it might not be. But the more you do it, the more you'll create this habit of taking people's crap personally and not having any empathy for what they may be going through, whether they actually are or not. Yeah, that's right? not the point. It actually, no. That's not the – it, it doesn't, doesn't matter ma if they are or not. <laughs> that's right. It, it, this is a technique to help you yes. manage other people's crap, right? Yeah. Um, and if you don't manage it, then you will start to become that person who takes everybody's crap personally, mm. right? And let's be honest, you don't want to be that person. No. Uh, because we all know them and we all know that they are really, really hard work. You know, those people you always feel like you're walking on eggshells around them because you never know when they're going to react or how they're going to react. Uh, you never know when they might misunderstand you or take something out of context mm. because they always seem to take things personally regardless of what the intention behind it is. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. know what? I just do not want to be that person, no. which is why I use this technique all the time. It helps me to have more empathy and then that empathy helps me to be a more confident and compassionate person regardless of whether that person deserves it or not. And yeah. sometimes people don't, let me tell you. But <laughs> because it's not about them. It's about how you will let their comments affect you. Right. And, you know, I've got so many of these go-to statements ready in my head because, honestly, we never know what someone might be going through and, you know – 
when they're going to sling it our way. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, maybe they've had a terrible fight with their partner. Maybe, you know, someone stole their Christmas tree. Maybe they've <sighs> just been made redundant. Maybe their mum is sick or dying. Or maybe they've just had a really, really terrible day. I mean, it happens, right? Yeah, it does happen. It happened to me a couple of weeks back. I had a really, really bad morning. And the poor woman, I went to the gym, the poor woman on reception sort of smiled and went and said good morning. And I sort of like... I wasn't pleasant. <laughs> and you know what? I thought, oh, my God, I, th- I, I thought about that the whole – and I thought I've got to go back and I had to go back. I did go back and apologise and just go, but oh, imagine, sorry about this morning. Right, imagine if she'd taken that personally. Imagine if I she'd know. thought, oh, my God, have I done something wrong? Why is she so mean? What? Like imagine how that can bad, escalate. I was having a bad day, darling. It yeah. was just one of those days. But, you know, <laughs> it just – so it happens even yeah. to the best of us, right? Absolutely. But look, it actually doesn't matter what statement you make in your head and it doesn't even matter if it's true. What matters is that you create compassion for that person, which helps you to not take their crap personally. And, the, you know, this way of thinking will actually allow you to move from these situations much easier because it will give you the ability to rationalise their behaviour and not to have to keep thinking about it or worse, yeah. overthinking about it. Like my client that... You know, yeah, 18 yeah. months later, she's still thinking about something that happened in a presentation. Eight, it's like too much energy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For too something that may energy. or may not even be true. And it's, yeah. It's right? Probably, I'm really sure it wasn't true. But yeah. anyway. And, and, and you know what's even worse than that? That sometimes we get caught thinking about something that happened in the past. Yes. It's well, not even is, something that's just yeah. happened to us. No. We think about things that happened in the past and then that starts to dictate our behaviour in the present and the future. Yeah. Remember that so that person on social media once who smashed us about our <laughs> posts and about the fact that we were apparently completely unrelatable and completely inauthentic, right? Yeah. Now, we could have taken that really personally because she was not nice. She wasn't nice. No, and we could have started to change the way we operated on social media to make ourselves more relatable by her standards. But the truth is we know who we are, yeah. right, and we know what we do. Um, So instead we reframed it by creating empathy. Maybe she had a terrible day and she needed to lash out on someone. I don't know. Oh, she was she was literally typing away. She'd had too many Chardonnays after a bad day at work (laughs) and was like, uh, unfortunately, our post came up and it was. But maybe she feels that I don't know. She's not a very self-expressed person, and maybe she felt comfortable making comments like that using the anonymity of social media. Who Mm. knows? Maybe you know something that we'd written had triggered her about an experience that she had. Whatever the reason or whether there was one or not, to be honest, (laughs) um, by reframing the way we thought about her comments, they no longer had any control over us. So then we just kept on doing what we were doing. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, and I remember I had a coaching client once that who I think her boss had told her that she wasn't sort of cut out for a new or implied that she wasn't cut out for a new role that had come up or something. And yeah. look, she took it really personally and pushed herself so hard because she was then became afraid that she was going to lose her job or something. Anyway, she got all caught up. And this had yeah. happened I think like six months earlier or something. Anyway. We talked it all through. It kept coming up for her, this particular comment that he made. Yeah. And, you know, I think she'd sort of created a habit of herself of the way she worked and behaved. As I said, six months down the track, she was still relating to her boss in the same way, that she was going to lose her job any minute and she was stressed and nervous and – yeah, she was still overwork. Yeah, yep. she was thinking about it. She was still behaving as though she was going to lose a job at any minute. And the truth was, her boss didn't even think that way anymore. Like we actually set up some structures. She went back and and talked to him about that comment, and he yep. didn't even remember the comment. Like it was just this is the you know. Yeah, there it is. But she had turned it into something else that it actually wasn't from the beginning, yep. and it was dictating her behaviour. Because she'd taken that comment so personally, it had changed who she was. It had increased her stress. It was just decreased her confidence. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like we said earlier, if you don't bring it up instantly, it will fester. You will think about it over and over again. And then it just, it becomes something of these massive proportions. It looks nothing like what it was originally. No. It just gets out of control. Yeah. She turned it into something else that then, but then that had a catastrophic impact effect on her confidence and was affecting so many other parts of her life and how she was behaving in like crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. The impact of one comment, right? And and there are so many examples of this happening, honestly. I mean, we could be talking about this all day. I'm sure you've all experienced a situation like this where 
someone's made a comment um, yeah. and, and it's stuck with you for months, sometimes years, and also the reverse – yeah. Where we say something to someone and then they'll come back to us a year later and go, remember when you said this? And you're like, oh, no, I don't really remember that. <laughs> like, I'm sorry it hurt you. Like, you yeah. know, it, and, and they've been thinking about it for a year and yeah. you have, we have no idea the impact that that could have had on them. Yeah. Uh, but for that person, it's become a massive issue. And, and imagine the damage it's done to their confidence when it may never have been that intention, right? I always go back to this saying. So when, when, I, when it comes up, with myself, like as I'm sure it happens for you too, Anastasia, that I mean there, there are things that I still think about from years and years ago yeah, and it always, I'm still thinking about them. It's generally 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I'm lying there sleeping, having trouble yeah. sleeping and all of a sudden it pops into your head. But when this comes up with clients as well, I often say to them, and I, this is a, another sort of technique I use on myself, Yeah, I say to myself and I help my clients say this to themselves, is there anyone else on the planet still thinking about that moment or that comment or that whatever? Yeah. And usually the, the answer, answer is, is no. no. <laughs> there yeah. is nobody else on the face of the earth out of the whatever the 7 billion or however many people are, there is no one else still. Actually, I shared with a lady the other day with one of my clients, this was sort of coming up, and I said to her, you know, I went to a wedding, I think it was about, Oh, God, it must be about six or seven years ago now. Yeah. And look, I'd had a few too many Proseccos. <laughs> I was dancing like a crazy person. I sort of embarrassed myself a little bit. I still think about it sometimes. Oh, my God. And no one else remembers, Jody. Nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. But that's the thing. Yeah. It's like that moment of is anyone else on the face of the planet yep. actually thinking about how I was carrying on a little bit and dancing too wildly? And yet we torture ourselves with it. Torture. Right. Yep. Ridiculous. But that's that's what I use to get over those moments when you've overthought it. It's 18 months later. It's five years later. It's 10 years later. It's 20 years later. Nobody you've got to try cares. and have techniques. But it come, it's going to come up, right? Yeah. You've got to have techniques to get it squashed very quickly yes. and move on. Yes. Because if, you lie, if you're going to lie there in bed at 3 a.m. thinking about it and stressing over it five years later for an hour – what is what? It's, it's not, not helping you live your best life. No, it really isn't. And it's just going to undermine me in that moment, in that day, for that yeah. for that part of my life. When yeah. there's nothing, one, there's nothing I can do about it. And then how about that new habit that you're creating? Yes, right. That oh, something that happened five years ago is affecting me today. Yeah. It's inevitable that it will then affect you in another five years Absolutely. unless you do something to stop it. Yep. Honestly, we could be talking about this all day. It's know, such an I important know, topic, but I think it's time to wrap it up. So if you are listening today and you take anything from this episode, please Don't let it be Don't take it this. personally. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but let it be this, right? <laughs> that having empathy will always, and we mean always, help you to not take other people's crap personally because yeah. it will give you a perspective that you may not have otherwise considered, yeah. especially during a volatile or an emotional situation, right? We promise you that it will make all the difference and it will ensure that you do not become that person, that person who creates a habit of taking everyone's crap personally. I know. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for listening today. We have we just love having these discussions and sharing them with you. We yeah. love doing interviews, but we also love having these moments where Anastasia and I can just download and have talk about chat. the stuff that we love. We love talking about this topic. Yeah. But if you feel that you would like some personalized help with your confidence, then please get in touch. Confidence Coaching can teach you all the things you've heard about in this podcast plus so much more. Together, we can create a personalized confidence program to help you boost your confidence levels and have you living your best life in no time. Now listen, I don't do BS. I don't do fluff. We definitely will not spend hours and hours on theory. My confidence coaching sessions are all about learning the best confidence boosting techniques for you and getting into action right away because that's what makes the difference. Yep. I keep you accountable. I will be your best cheerleader and I help you get back on track whenever you need to. And we'll have fun doing it. So head over to risewomen.com, go to our confidence coaching page and book your free 30-minute discovery call session with me today. Let me help you become the most confident version of you because as we always say, with confidence, anything is possible. Bye for now. Bye.